Once again, we bring you the romance of Helen Trent, who sets out to prove for herself what so many women long to prove, that because a woman is 35 or more, romance in life need not be over, that romance can live in life at 35 and after. Lovely Helen Trent is fighting to save the man she loves, handsome Gil Whitney, from a trap set by red-haired Faye Granville, a scheming adventuress who's determined to marry Gil for his money and position. Faye has already announced her engagement to Gil, and as we heard her say to her brother, Darcy... Gil can't get out of it now, Darcy. He's been very foolish. He took me out, even kissed me, and I have a witness to the fact he asked me to marry him. Who? You, Darcy, my dear brother. You'd testify, wouldn't you? Of course you would. No. Gil can't get out of this engagement now without being dragged through a scandal he'll never live down. Say, do you think Helen Trent is going to stand still while you grab Gil Whitney? Helen Trent can't do a thing to stop me. If she tries, she'll be sorry. Everything's going our way now, Darcy. Everything. But now Helen Trent has found a clue to Faye's evil hidden past. The name of a man, Carlton Fletcher, whom Faye once knew in Silver City. And Helen has persuaded multimillionaire Brett Chapman to fly her in his private plane to Nevada in the hope of finding Carlton Fletcher. Now it's nearly noon of the day of Helen's takeoff for Nevada. We find Faye Granville in Hollywood in a lavish emerald green velvet housecoat in her mirrored bedroom. This moment, Faye is talking to her brother, Darcy. What do you mean, Darcy? Look, sister dear, you're in trouble. Do you know where Helen Trent is today? No. She left at dawn in that millionaire Chapman guy's private plane. Helen Trent did? Is she eloping with Brett Chapman? Oh, Dorothy, that would solve everything. Don't you wish it, Faye. You told me to watch Helen. Last night, I saw every light in her house out at nine. I figured she was turning in for an early start somewhere. So this a.m. early, I moseyed over there. I saw Helen come out of her house, get in her car, and I followed her to the airport. That's wonderful. Then she's given up trying to get Whitney back. I figured so until I wandered over to the hangar and got to talking to the boys. Helen's going to Nevada, Faye. Nevada? Are you sure? Silver City, Nevada. The mechanic let it drop. Silver City? What, what is Helen going there for? That's what I'm wondering, Faye is how you once spent a little time there and met up with a guy named Carlton Fletcher. Remember? It's coincidence. That's all it is. Helen Trent couldn't possibly know anything about Carlton Fletcher. And then again, she could. Helen spent quite a little time here the night of your party looking around, Faye. Dorothy, it isn't possible. It just isn't possible. Maybe Helen is going to Silver City, but it doesn't mean anything. And maybe not, Faye. On the other hand, if Helen should just happen to bump into Carlton Fletcher... How could she? That's a good question. Carlton used to be big potatoes out there. 10,000-acre ranch and all. You cleaned him out, Faye. So how would he get into society circles and meet a dame like Helen Trent? Darcy, stop talking. I've got to think. I... I know Helen Trent's trip to Silver City is just a coincidence, but it... But you can't afford to take a chance, Faye. I'm not going to take a chance. I'm going to burst Helen's little balloon before she even gets started. How? I'm going to see Gil Whitney. Meanwhile, on a lonely ranch land in northern Nevada, we find Helen Trent at this moment with Brett Chapman. In a distant field is Brett's plane shining in the sun. Confronting Brett and Helen is a tired-looking, gray-haired woman, anger stamped on her roughened features that once may have had beauty. She's saying, And you two might as well understand, we don't want strangers hanging around here. But this ranch belongs to a friend of mine. He told me to use his landing field and borrow a car if I need it to drive up to Silver City. Maybe this ranch does belong to a friend of yours. But you came here snooping. 
I can see it in your faces. Please, Mrs. Fletcher, you are Mrs. Fletcher. Adele Fletcher, that's my name. Well, I'm Helen Trent, and this is my friend Brett Chapman. Maybe you would call it snooping, but I don't. I've come to find someone. I've come for help. And I think, Mrs. Fletcher, you're just the person who can help me. Me help the likes of you? How? You see, I've come all the way from Los Angeles to find someone here in Silver City named Fletcher. Carlton Fletcher. <laughs> My husband. Yes. See, I I didn't think we'd find him here on a ranch. We were going on to Silver City. I assure you, Mrs. Fletcher, I had no idea. I knew my friend bought this ranch a couple of years ago. Bought it? Practically grabbed it. It was my husband's ranch. Carlton put his life's blood into this place. Big rock ranch. Finest in this part of the state. Then, then he had trouble. He had to sell it. He kind of went to pieces. Couldn't bear to leave it, and the fellow who owns it now got it cheap. Let Carlton stay on sort of caretaker, you might say. Carlton isn't well. I do most of the work. Work like a peasant in my own house. The house that used to be mine. I'm sorry. And then the likes of you show up. City folks with your smart talk, your stylish clothes, snooping. Well, it was city folks like you. A woman and a man who brought ruin to me and my husband. And I'm not aiming to let you take one step nearer to us. Well, I, I understand, Mrs. Fletcher. I, I had hoped you might help us, but if you won't, we won't trouble you. Brett, shall we go? Go, Helen? Well, I thought... I'd, I'd rather leave. I, I don't want to upset Mrs. Fletcher anymore. Look, baby, we've flown over a thousand miles to get to this godforsaken spot. The guy you want to see is over there in that house. You're not even going to see him? No, Brett, we're not. But thank you, Mrs. Fletcher. I, I'm sorry we bothered you. I'm sorry, too. You do look different from that other woman, miss, but we're not having truck with strangers no how. Of course not. Come on, Brett. Come on. I don't get it, Helen. Has she gone back to the house? Yeah. But what's the idea? The guy Carlton Fletcher's in there somewhere. The ranch belongs to a friend of mine. If you want to talk to Fletcher, go in. Not that way, Brett. Not by order. Okay. Well, baby, I've enjoyed the flight. We better get going on to civilization. Carson's got a field. We can get gas. You go on to Carson, Brett. What? Me? And leave you? Don't you see it all, Brett? Carson Fletcher is the man Faye Granville knew, and from everything Mrs. Fletcher said, it was Faye and her brother Darcy who ruined those two people. I'm sure of it. That's why Mrs. Fletcher is so suspicious, so hateful of strangers. But I think maybe, alone, I could talk to her and her husband. She seemed just a little warmer when I said we were leaving. If I go back to the house alone... Helen, you expect me to fly off and leave you with that half-mad woman? Heaven knows what her husband's like. Yes, Brett, please leave me here. There must be a phone in the house. You fly on to Carson. I'll call you there. Look, Helen, I've got some rights in there, too. I'm not just a taxi driver on this trip. I'm a guy you once were going to marry, and I'm still mad about you. For three hours, I've been sitting in that plane so near to you, I go crazy. Never a tumble. Now I'm supposed to drop you like cab fare. Here you say thank you. Well, I'm not. Brett, let go of my arm. I've been waiting for some time for this, Helen. A chance to be entirely alone with you. Brett. You knew this is why I flew you up here. To have some time by ourselves, take you in my arms, kiss you, Helen. You know it's what I want. I'm mad for you, Helen. Brett, stop it. I came to you as a friend. There's no such thing between a man and a woman. Forget with me, Helen. I'll give you the world. Brett, let me go. Brett. No, not now, Helen. I'm going to put fire into that beautiful marble you're made of. I'm going to... Brett! Miss, uh... Oh, Miss Fenn. Yes, Mrs. Fletcher. Brett, let me go. Brett! Miss Fenn. Yes. Yes, Mrs. Fletcher. Gee, I'm glad I found you, Miss Fenn. I... I figured I... I lost my manners a little back there. I used to know how to welcome folks who came to see us. I... I reckon I've forgotten with all our trouble. My husband, Mr. Fletcher, and I would be right glad to welcome you to Big Rock Ranch. While Eva...
evil, scheming Faye Granville plans a hasty marriage to Gil Whitney, the man Helen Trent loves, Helen at last is about to meet the man whom Faye Granville and her brother ruined, Carlton Fletcher, in Silver City, Nevada. Standing at the door of the big ranch house, Helen says to Mrs. Fletcher, Mrs. Fletcher, you're quite sure your husband Carlton is willing to see me? I'm not saying if he'll talk, Mrs. Trent. He won't talk much to anybody anymore. But if you don't mind... I appreciate his seeing me, Mrs. Fletcher. He was a fine man, Mrs. Trent. A fine man. But you might have to forgive him a little now. You won't want to miss the next dramatic chapter in the romance of Helen Trent at the same time tomorrow. This is Field and Farrington saying goodbye for the sponsors of Helen Trent. <laughs> Now for the romance of Helen Trent. The romance of Helen Trent is the story of a woman who will not let life pass her by because she is over 35. Instead, she proves what so many women long to prove, that the romance of youth can exist into middle life and even beyond. Glamorous Helen Trent faces a desperate crisis in her deep love for the brilliant, handsome lawyer Gil Whitney. For within 48 hours, the beautiful but evil adventuress Faye Granville is announcing her intention of marrying Gil Whitney. As we heard Helen say... Faye Granville has caught Gil in a trap. She pretended to be a secretary and Gil gave her a job. She pretended to be alone and penniless. And Gil showed her sympathy. He even took her out. And now Faye is claiming that Gil proposed to her and she's threatening Gil with scandal. There's only one way now to stop Faye Granville. That's to find some proof of her notorious past. To find someone who knows who Faye Granville really is. If it's not too late. But meanwhile, high above Hollywood, in an elaborate penthouse, we find the cold, calculating woman who is helping Faye Granville trap Gil Whitney. It's Cynthia Whitney, Gil's long-estranged wife in name only, who has one purpose in life, to hurt Helen Trent. Now we find Cynthia in her bedroom, a smile of satisfaction on her thin face, as she says to her good friend, the Hollywood columnist, Yes, Daisy, it's all settled. Everything is working out exactly as I planned. Things usually do, don't they, Cynthia? I don't care for that disapproving tone, Daisy. It's admiration, Cynthia, and a little regret. I hate to see a guy like Gil toss to a tigress like Faye Granville to be ruined. Daisy, if you're going to stand here like the voice of doom, I'd rather you left. I still have a lot of packing to do. Immediately after Faye's party to announce her engagement to Gil, I'm taking the plane to Mexico City to give Gil his divorce so that Faye can marry him at once. And you swore you'd never set Gil Whitney free. Not while there was a chance of his marrying Helen Trent. But now that Faye has him nearly hooked, Oh, Daisy, why do you think I've spent so much on a little no-good like Faye Granville? Only to be sure Faye would get Gil away from Helen Trent. And now that the moment's here, I'm going to enjoy it. Doesn't Gil have anything to say about this? He's six feet of brains and good looks. Is he just letting you and Faye Granville cut him up between you? Oh, Gil is kicking like a steer. Last night, he went to Faye and offered her a million dollars to leave town and the country. A million dollars? One million. Well, I didn't know Gil Whitney had a million dollars. He doesn't. He was going to raise it on credit. I arrived in the nick of time to point out to Faye that even if Gil did raise a million dollars, I'd own half of it by the community property law. So she'd never get it anyway. Well, that stopped Gil cold. Cynthia, just suppose at the last moment somebody turned up who discovered Faye had a shady past, a really bad record. Where would that leave you? In Mexico, sunning myself at the beach at Acapulco. Okay. It's your funeral. Oh, no, no, it isn't. It's Helen Trent's funeral. All I've lived for is to see that beautiful romance between Helen and Gil smashed. And Saturday night, when Faye announces her engagement to Gil, Helen's high hopes will be smashed completely and for good. 
Oh, the doorbell. I don't want to see anybody. And Hannah's out. Uh, Daisy, you answer it. Okay. And get rid of whoever it is. Daisy's beginning to irritate me. Suggesting trouble. I know what I'm doing. Paid out a lot of money to set Faye up in clothes in a house. To attract my husband and name only, Gil Whitney. And nobody is going to frighten me out of my little scheme now. Nobody. Cynthia, it's Faye Granville's brother, Darcy. He insists on seeing you. Daisy, what in the world... Well, I can't see him. I've got to pack. He insists. Tell him no, Daisy. Absolutely no. I want nothing to do with that wormy oh, little... Oh, I'm wormy now, eh, Mrs. Whitney? Darcy, have you lost your mind? Get out of my bedroom. The lady here tried to give me a stall, but it's not going to work. Shall we talk here? I... I'll talk to you in the living room, Darcy. That's better. Wait here, Daisy. I'll call if I need help. If you need help, Cynthia? <laughs> That's the last. Maybe 20 years ago I'd have been interested. Why, you... That'll pay you back for that wormy crack. What did you come here for, Darcy? My sister Faye and I have been talking things over, Mrs. Whitney. Last night, Gil Whitney offered my sister a million bucks to clear out. We want that million bucks. You want it instead of Faye's marriage to Gil? Look, I never liked this marriage stall. That's not Faye's dish of tea either. She's got a little hypnotized with all this falderall you've been surrounding her with. But we figure we'll take the million and clear out. We? You mean you. And you don't know what you're talking about, Darcy. Gil Whitney hasn't got a million dollars. He could raise it, he said. If you didn't get in the way, Cynthia. That's what I came to talk to you about. Getting out of the way. Darcy, are you threatening me? For a million bucks, I'd threaten anybody. And I'm mighty quick. Darcy, my wrist! I was just showing you, Cynthia. I've got fingers like steel. Funny for a little guy like me, isn't it? Now, listen to me, Darcy. I've done a great deal to help your sister Faye get Gil Whitney. Sure, I know. And if she listens now to this crazy offer by Gil Whitney, she'll lose everything. It's only a trick of Gil's. Even if I didn't interfere, Gil hasn't got a million dollars. Would take him 20 years to make it, sending it to you little by little. Meanwhile, always knowing where you and your sister are. Would you like that, Darcy? Why do you say that? Because I have a feeling you and your sister don't want people to know where you are for very long. What do you know about us? Not a thing, Darcy. I'm not interested in either of you. Once I've divorced Gil and he's married to Faye, I shan't see any of you again. But if Gil Whitney, instead of marrying your sister, starts paying her all that money, he'll always know just what she's up to, won't he? I never thought of that. And Helen Trent will be even more interested. She's the one you and your sister have to fear. She's the one who suspects you now. Helen Trent's got nothing on my sister or me. Not yet. But she's trying to find something. And if she does, a million dollars won't protect you. But if your sister Faye is married to Gil, the most brilliant lawyer in the state, Gil will have to protect you. I never thought of that. I wanted that money. A million, a million. Then you'd better get Helen Trent out of your way, not me. How? <laughs> That's your affair, Darcy, not mine. But to prove I'm your friend, I'm going to write a little check for your own use. You're giving me money? Me, not Faye? Why? To prove we're on the same side, Darcy. Here, see? I'll sit down and write it right now. Here's one thousand dollars. Now, all you're to do is to see that your sister is married to Gil Whitney as early as next week, if possible, after I get my divorce papers. And that Helen Trent doesn't stop it. For a thousand bucks, I'd see Helen Trent at the bottom Here of... you are, Darcy. Now, it's a bargain. The wedding goes on. Okay, it's a bargain. The wedding goes on. You know, you're not so bad, Cynthia. <laughs> I'm very bad, Darcy. But you're a good deal worse. So glad we could reach an understanding. Now, a little later in the afternoon, we find Helen in her own lovely home. At this moment, she's in the sunroom, holding up a beautiful white evening gown. She drops it suddenly as she sees Gil Whitney standing at the open French door, the sun on his fine, handsome head. Helen says, Oh, Gil, you gave me a start. How long have you been standing there? Just a few minutes, darling. You might have said something. That would have spoiled the picture. 
You look like an angel holding all that white stuff around you. May I step in? You are in, aren't you, darling? Oh, heaven, heaven. When you use that... Oh, you're you're crushing my gown. Never mind your gown. I'd like to crush the very breath out of you, Helen, with a kiss. I... Oh, Gil. Gil, darling, let me go. You... You make me quite dizzy. And besides, we're not free to kiss like that. Helen, when you and I are together, I know in my heart, my whole soul, it's so right, so fine, so wonderful that... All the evil in the world can't come between us. I wish that was so. It is so. And it's what we're going to believe. I know my wife in name only, Cynthia, is working night and day to trap me into this marriage with me. To protect you, Helen, my darling, I'm... I'm pretending to go along with it. But something, something must turn up to end this nightmare. I hope it does. But you don't think so. Gil, within 48 hours, you'll be publicly engaged to Faye, and Cynthia will have given you your divorce. Unless you speak up now and refuse point blank. And put you, Helen, and your fine name at the mercy of that pair of devils, Faye and her brother. I'm not afraid, Gil. Well, you should be. Helen, I told you last night, Faye refused my offer of one million dollars. Yes, and... And to tell you the truth, Gil, I'm almost relieved. It would be horrible for you to take on a debt like that. It's better than a marriage I'm being forced into. You haven't married Fay yet, Gil. When you use that tone, Helen, I know what you're thinking. There's still time for you to dig up something about Fay's past. There's always time, Gil, until the very last minute. Helen, I want to tell you something. I've had people at work trying to find out about Fay. You have. You don't suppose I've taken this racket face pull on me sitting down, do you, darling? Yes, I've had the best men in the field tracing Fay Granville. They get as far as that mining camp and her former name, Flossie Grady. I tried to tell you, Gil, you wouldn't believe. No, but I do now. But after that, there's nothing, nothing. Faye's covered up her tracks as if she'd walked through sand. And you can't incriminate a girl for changing her name. We we can find nobody who will say they knew her. Nobody will admit it. Oh, Gil. Now look, darling. I haven't quit yet. I told you this for a reason. Whatever you think about Faye and her brother, whatever you hope for, you are to stay completely out of this mess now. Gil, I can't. You're going to. I can guess you're planning to wear that white dress to Faye's party. But you're not going to that party. You're staying in seclusion, Helen, until this is over. Gil, you're asking too much. I'm not asking. I'm ordering you, Helen. And I'll tell you why. I couldn't find out anything about Faye Grenville. But I found out a few things about that miserable brother of hers, Darcy. What, Gil? If Darcy Grenville isn't an...